It's almost a frustrating result. How do we not win that, do you think, today? Yeah, it's a frustrating result, but it's uh, the opposite of a, of a performance. It's a very strong performance from the first to the very last minute. Two minutes we lost uh, control of the match and uh, they were lucky to get this goal. This can happen in football. It was on us to take one of our chances. We created so many chances. I, like, uh, I liked how we played today, I liked the intensity, the quality, uh, the commitment from the whole group. We had uh, big chances to, to, to win this game by two, three goals. This can happen in football. We don't want it to happen, but uh, it can happen when it happens. Um, yeah. It's, it's very disappointing, of course, because we are all very competitive. But uh, yeah, there's no other way than accepting it and, and, and pick the positive. There's a lot of positive to take. It certainly, it was another very physical game today, wasn't it? Yeah, it was clear, and that's why I'm, I'm also pretty impressed how we accepted this fight. It was now uh, our seven match in a row, and um, come from two away games, come from Champions League play this kind of match against a, a tough opponent, a very physical opponent. So there was a lot of extra work needed, a lot of invisible work was needed to control the match like this and dominate the match like this. Like I said, I'm, I'm super happy with the performance, but uh, unfortunately we did not get the result we deserved. So we have to take it from somewhere else. Like you said, plenty of positives to take from it, one of which you go into the international break, top of the league. Yes. and. Uh, you know, we, 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 we take it step by step and uh, we demanded today to, to have an, another, to, to add another 5% to our performance in Malmö, which we clearly did. Maybe it was a 10 or 15% we added in terms of intensity and, and uh, in, in terms of speed of play and, and attacking sense. I think it was pure pleasure to watch this game, how we played. and. Um, this is what we do. We try to, to play this game also for our spectators, that they're happy in the stadium and, and uh, see a attacking side. Unfortunately, today we, we, we could not win, but, but we deserved. We know this. And finally, you now get a well-deserved break, a short break before a crazy, crazy schedule taking us through to Christmas. Absolutely. will not stop. No, it's uh, like the last break. And then we have like three months coming without any national breaks and with a lot of fixtures. And um, yeah now necessary unfortunately the most of the guys go and play for their national team so for us and the staff is it's a good moment to take a breath because after that we will try to push the team to the limit for the for the next month yo what's up people it's your boy carlos blue forche and you are tuned into the mighty blue lion podcast this is now episode 22 Thank you to everybody on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Google, and uh, where else? And all the other Anchor and all the other, basically, platforms that have my podcast now. Um, a big thank you and support to everybody in the, in the UK who listens. Um, everybody in the United States that's listening everybody in germany belgium and india because at the moment that's the only countries that's really um uh, tuning into this uh this podcast so thank you for that um i've got to say i'm a bit bit angry with anchor at the time because i have put two adverts on this podcast and uh I don't know how it work out but you if I put that it's an advert I'm supposed to get paid so don't ask me to put adverts on my podcast if you're not gonna pay I just uh, I'll tell you that straight up now um, I don't need endorsement I was looking for it but I don't really need it now now that I know what it is I just don't I don't want people coming to me crowding me when it goes viral and when, when it take off i don't want people coming out of the woodworks trying to sponsor me on the fuck off okay so mm -hmm. there'll be no more uh adverts on this podcast unfortunately you have to blame either anchor or you blame nike but either way you know what i mean when you use ads um you're supposed to get paid yeah simple yeah otherwise don't ask me don't ask me for it yeah okay so that's that there won't be any more adverts anymore 
and yeah i'm kind of in a volatile mood in general because um yes we did play really well uh the game finished one all between chelsea and burnley we was one nil up at half time we dominated the game all the way i would say till about probably about the 80th minute and we started getting a little lackadaisical big up to reese james who gets the mighty lion award king of the match uh man of the match player of the match you know he gets all those awards um a brilliant assist from him not just an assist but a great assist from him in the 33rd minute he's running down the wing took on a guy went past him managed to get a nice cross in on goal uh for kai habits to jump up because he's quite tall jump ahead of uh burnley's defense and get a nice header on goal um yes i know he put it away Kai Havertz is not a striker. Just uh, we we need to establish that uh, he's a makeshift. Um, he he can't even really play like a false nine. I've got to be honest. Um, I would have preferred Mason Mount. I know he's Mason. Mason did come on in the 85th minute. Um, I don't know what the reasoning was or that, but um, it was crazy, man. It was a crazy game because we outplayed them, man. Let's get to the stats as well. You know, 70% possession for Chelsea. We had four shots, 25 shots in total. Only four of them were on target. Um, R Ross Barkley missed a sitter. I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to get mad at him because he's coming off the bench. He's just, he didn't know whether he was coming or going about a season ago. And then after the pandemic, to, for, for him... Uh, he's 27 now. You know, he's approaching his prime. He he needs, to me, I would prefer him than Kai Havertz up front, honestly. Uh, I I know he missed that sitter and I know Kai Havertz scored. But I think that other chances that Kai Havertz had on goal, I just see Russ Barkley putting those away. Okay. Um, we had 833 touches of the ball, 660 passes. Eight tackles, three clearances, 14 corners, one only one offside. Uh, attacking wise, so we know the offside rule. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good sign. So it does look like we do need to just have a few systems of play for the three forwards, whichever combination it is. Um, this week, I'm I'm angry because this week we're playing basketball. Uh, we're putting football, we're, we're hitting footballs into basketball nets um, during training. Now, I understand you've got to build camaraderie. You've got to make players feel relaxed. You've got to have, you know, you've got to have banter, all these things, right? But you do this off the pitch. You, do the, you don't bring it on the training pitch. Thomas Tuchel, to me, no disrespect to him. This has to be my first criticism of him because he has to take the fall for this. Yes, the team, they dominated and yeah, but last minute, that last minute lapse of concentration um, from Christiansen actually and um, Silva. Silva wasn't even facing the direction that you're supposed to face. When you're a defender, you cannot be, be looking at the goalkeeper as a, as a centre-back. You have to be facing the other way because that's where the ball's going to come. That's where the, the, the attackers are going to come. He's side on looking the other direction. He didn't even see the ball. He didn't even see Vidra slip past him for the goal. The goal. Oh, God. Let, let, shall we talk about that goal? Or <laughs> Let's talk about. Yeah, let's talk about that goal. A team that had 30% possession. Five shots on goal, you know. And they got two on target. So they're more prolific striking than we are. We had 25 and only four on target. They had five and two on target. So <laughs> what? Are they better finishers than us? 436 touches of the ball. 285 passes. And it was mainly the last eight passes that they played were really what led to us getting wrecked, man. Um, 17 tackles from them they made way more tackles because they had to 25 clearances obviously we had 25 shots on goal 
uh, four on target, but they cleared every ch every damn chance, man. Uh, two corners, they had four offsides, so they certainly know how to attack better than us. Uh, four yellow cards and nine fouls conceded. Like, it's ridiculous, man. This is Burnley, man. We've played them 15 times, beat them 10, four times home, six times away, four draws. They've only had one win away, and it was an away win years ago out of 15. We should not be losing to Burnley. Burnley are a relegation team. And they're a, they're a silly team. You know what I mean? I said that. Some of the black players would have to stand up and be counted. What does he go and do in this game? He drops Trevor Chalaba. After he just signed a new deal. 40 grand a week. Right? New deal. You go and get rid of the, the, the not get rid of the you, but you you put him on the bench, and you play Christiansen. I've told you, Christiansen is good against in, in probably good in continental football FA Cups. He probably would play better against a team like Liverpool than a team like Burnley. These teams like Burnley and that they got pace. You got to remember that. Don't underestimate that. They got pace. They know how to attack. Because in most cases, that's the that's their only way of winning. They can't, you know what I mean. They're not good at do, playing the ball out from the back like we are. Um, we're very calm in defence. I get it. We was very calm. Edward Mendy again was immense up into that last um, that last goal. Uh, Rudiger, I don't know, man. I don't even like rating them, but. I'll, I'll rate them afterwards, but Rudiger was all right to me. Like I said, the combination of back, f the back three. If you're going to play Christiansen, then you you would probably need um, Chalaba at some point, and that's that's how I see it. You, you got to have Chalaba at the back because that's the only way I think we look good going forward. Because he's a midfielder as well. And he can comfortably bring the ball forward and get shots on goal. I, it was silly. I know we got to rest people, all of that. He was probably overwhelmed by his new contract. But he didn't seem, you know, disgruntled when he was on the pitch and they were kicking the balls into the net. I must say, actually, Trevor Chalibur wasn't actually present for that. But still, Thomas Tuchel, uh, it's obvious everybody knows that Thomas Tuchel used to play football. We're well aware you had a career that went... I would say it was successful because you managed to at least r realize your potential. Maybe you didn't realize all your potential um, of how far you could have taken it. But he's six foot three. He was a defender. Um, you know, he, he played for Kronbach. Uh, he played for FC Augsburg, Augsburg. Sorry. He went to Stuttgart at Kickers. And then he played for a team called SSV Ulm. And he was only there four years. He, he made 70 appearances, scored two goals. Um, and I can see now with our defensive players, um, he does admire, you could tell like he blatantly admires like defenders because he was one himself. Um, that's why we're, 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 do, we're defending so well. However, Thomas... You know, I, I hope you're not one of these players that hated strikers and hated forwards and hated creative players. Because if that's the case, uh, it's going to be hard for us to, to, for you, well, for him to implement that into our team and make us start attacking more, man. When you've had your career, when you've played it at whatever level, Sunday league, whatever, and thing, once you pass 40, that's it, your career done. Yeah, there's the you know it's done. It's a hard fact of of life. I've had to do. I, I used to box. I had to take it. You have to take it. You, when it's your time, it's your time. So to see him playing basketball, I know. I get it. You're trying to relive uh, a bit of childhood, a bit of youth. Maybe when he was at Stuttgart, um, not Stuttgart. Uh, else, uh, we call it. Um, um, is that how you pronounce it? U L M. Okay, I'm just gonna say U L M, and you'll understand. 
yeah, when he was at that team, maybe he there wasn't camaraderie. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe it was a bit more stricter. Maybe it was because I know Germans were really, really strict back in the day, like back in the nineties and the noughties. Um, but if you if you look at Jurgen Klopp, and I'm not trying to make this about Thomas Tuchel, but if you look at Jurgen Klopp, he also was a right back. He was a right back and a striker though. And I think it shows. He had obviously had a better career as well than Thomas Tuchel. And um, he doesn't feel the need, I guess, to... I don't like to say this, but like, I feel like Thomas probably missed out on the adoration, the adoration and all that aspect of football. And uh, now he sort of lives his youth, uh, misspent youth, uh, through Chelsea. And that's not bad. I mean, that's not a bad tonic. Imagine that, man. You go from Dortmund to PSG and now you're at Chelsea. I mean, he's lucky. Yeah, he's, he's very lucky. Um, you know, he's very lucky. He's always been in a t at a team where there's money, where there's a good academy and thing. And I get all of that. But um, because he didn't realise his full potential, that's where, why we're lacking in the attacking front now. Obviously, he was a defender. Um, I don't know if it was ill discipline. I don't know if he was bullied. Maybe he was isolated. He felt isolated at this club. Um, but he didn't make it. He was there for four years and he didn't really break through. Um, he probably realising now that he's better than probably 80% of the guys hit in the premiership and that's what I saw doing that um, uh, you know that 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 um, training session with them with the basketballs and that he got it obviously he hit it in the bar in the basket perfectly I think about two times and then um, the kids were, were and then he said to the kid the kids you know he said to the players um, Look, I got it in the basket twice. I'm the only one to do it. So he's still he's still got a bit of youthfulness to him, which I find I think is good. But um, and it's okay if you want to relive your your youth through them. But relive your youth uh, off the pitch, out outside of training, because right now we are not an elite club. We're a continental club, and we've been a continental club since 1961. But we are not one of Europe's elite. I know we're the champions of Europe now, and people are gonna say, "What are you talking about?" We are not an elite club. Not statistically, we're not because we've only won six leagues. Arsenal have won 13 league titles. They sit above us, even though we've won more European titles. They sit above us in the standings. So do Liverpool. So do you know what I mean? Even Ajax. I think we're beneath Ajax. We're like 13th place overall statistically. Wins, draws, everything. So we're not. We we can't boast until we win at least two more titles. Yeah, and then we can start boasting champions of Europe with this, that, and a third. I am happy with the first half. The first half performance. Um, but again, I'll make a point about that. That I feel like Jurgen Klopp, that, like leave all the fun stuff for, yeah, leave it for like January when the weather's better. Ja not even January. Leave it till about April when the weather's better and we know where we are, and um, we can start, you know, popping the champagne then. But to pop it so early like that at the beginning of November, I just knew, and it was, I think. That little lapse of concentration from Christiansen, I couldn't believe he didn't even see the ball go over his head, and he, his his head was elsewhere. It was it was really really bad, and I, I said to myself, we just signed Tre Trevor Chalabar, we you bought him through Thomas, and then you even said to him in training, oh excellent um, uh, execution um, Trevor. And you were putting your arm around him and all that. And then you dropped him. You didn't even play him on, on Saturday. I knew it. I knew there was something to that. Um, so be careful, Trevor, as well. You know what I mean? You know, I think sometimes the team should just tell him, like, hey, listen, we're here to kick ball and win titles, you know. We're not here for this basketball nonsense. I know you've got to build, um, like I say, uh, a good morale. 
in the club you'll get that you'll get that with um when you play well even if you lose but you you show some dogmatic nature to yourself you, you some fight something but don't don't give away the the game like that in the in the last two minutes a lapse of concentration and you Vidra literally skipped behind uh, Thiago Silva who was facing he was literally facing sideways does that make sense he's supposed to be facing forward maybe side on but you're supposed to be forward your head's supposed to be forward your body can be side on my man's body is flat side on and he's looking at the at the line like he's looking at the corner flag he didn't even see Vidra Vidra's massive he, he didn't see Vidra just skip past behind him and it was just it was embarrassing the goal was embarrassing and it you know we worked so hard for so long we cannot hold on to one nil wins at Chelsea we cannot afford to do that when you see Liverpool they know they have to get a, a, a goal straight afterwards to you know keep the game in the bag if Liverpool keep playing the way they're playing I don't know I don't think we've got a shot of winning this title I'm going to be honest we cannot play if we drop points like that we we're, we're, we're not going to win this title we went with a 3-4-1-2 as normal like I said Rudiger Christiansen Silva I it's not a good mix um, I don't mind Christiansen and Silva but the, you have to take out either Rudiger or thing because when all three of them are there uh, Christiansen to me the way he seemed to uh, it was just ridiculous. He wasn't even in position. He's supposed to be the central uh, of the the central defender of the three, and Silva's supposed to be on the right. But you, we could see on that game that in that game, um, Silva was in the middle and Christiansen was out of position, which is why Vidra, uh, I suppose in a way, Silva was un would have been unable to pick him up anyway because he wasn't meant to be marking him. So that was just a stupid error. Um, it's it's kind of hard. I can't blame Rhys James because he's, you know, he's playing part of a four-man midfield. He got the assist for us. He was immense. I can't blame him. Although, if we had a four-four-two, he would have been closer to Christiansen. He would have got he would have got in the way of that shot or maybe maybe made a tackle. But anyway. It wasn't to be. In the midfield, we went with Jorginho, our captain, of course, um, who I'm starting to see. Yeah, we, we only really look like winning with Kante and Jorginho in that midfield. I understand that. I would have gone with Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I told you the reasons why during the week. He did come on in seven, in the 73rd minute. Pulis Pulisic and uh, Mount, they came on in the 85th minute. Um, for Callum Hudson a day and Kante respectively, but um, boy, <laughs> I don't know, man. Ben Chilwell he played he played well. Rhys James played pretty well, very well actually. Like I said, man of the match, but he played pretty well. I feel that he could have played possibly a little bit better, and he may have to over the few weeks, over the few coming weeks, because uh, damn. It's, it's not looking good on the attacking front. At least with him, with Rhys James on the wing, um, cutting in from that right midfield and getting crosses on the ball, we certainly look like scoring more. So hopefully when Lukaku comes back, we can get that. No disrespect to Kai Havertz. He got the goal, the only goal of the game for us. Um, he had a lot of shots on goal too. He missed a, a chance. Ross Barkley, for me, he only came on in the 73rd minute. So I'm not going to get mad at him. I can't admire him. I wish that he would have gone with Barkley. Um, sorry, Barkley came off. What am I talking about? I, was, I wish he would have um, started with Barkley against um, Brent. Was it Brentford? I forgot. I'm, I'm for mixing up the games now. But I think it was um, Brentford. But I just feel that Kai Havertz up front is is not really is not really doing it for me anyway. Jay Rodriguez managed to be not picked up as well, 
So somebody down the left, it could have been Chilwell. Again, I find it hard. I don't want to blame Chilwell, but obviously when you've got three centre-backs, it's either you or Rudiger that's got to pick up Jay Rodriguez there, man. Come on, man. Because he, he had acres of space and was able to put a ball, literally plant a ball behind the defenders. And Christensen, he, the way he reacted, he didn't even know what was happening. By the time he turned round, Vajra was already through. And and it, it, Silver's looking the complete other way. It was a calamity, man. It was a, it was an absolute calamity, man. I don't even want to talk about the game. And people say it, it, it was positive. You know, we we had shots on goal, and fam, we need to put these away. Forget about shots and goal. We need to put these shots away. How we have twenty five goals, uh, twenty five shots on goal, and only get five on target or four on target uh, is beyond me, man. Um, what else can I say? I don't really. Ross Bartley, but Callum Hudson Odoi played was immense for me. Again, him and Reese James to me um, seem to be wearing Chelsea on their sleeve and shoulders. Ben Chilwell as well. Obviously, Jorginho just looks immense there. Um, I just think if you're going to play Christiansen. Maybe you want to play Cesar as Pelicata next to him. You need a calmer head if you don't want to go with Trevor Chalabar. But I would have definitely played with Chalabar. I would have pre preferred to see Malang Sar. Um, aside from that, you that, those are the games you kind of rest Rudiger uh, and Silva. And you play the young uh, defenders. But he didn't do that. Kepa was on the bench. He didn't come on. Sar didn't come on. Chalabar didn't come on. Cesar Ellis as Pilicata didn't come on. Like I said, Pulis Chick, Ruben Loftus Cheek, and Mason Mount came on. And they came on for Kante, Ross Barkley, and Callum Hudson Adoy, respectively. Saul, he needs to go back in January. No disrespect to Saul. He's, I'm sure he's a good player. It's not going to work for him here. He's on 150 bags a week here on loan. Like, are we, are we silly? I just don't see what he brings to the team that we haven't got already. And, um, you know, he doesn't do anything extra that Mason Mount can't do or Loftus-Cheek or Kai Havertz or Zayic. Um, we just, you know, we don't need any more midfielders. We could do with some more attacking players, though. Maybe a couple forwards. Or maybe, you know, I would like to see um, the Brazilian Anthony at this club. Or I would have had Douglas Louise, but he's at um, Aston Villa now. Um, but definitely January, we should be either looking to bring back um, Armundo Broja. But if he's if he's on loan for a whole season, I would like to see him uh, come back next season definitely and start for us. We need as many strikers as as we as we can get. We sold um, Ik Ubo. Uh, I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it. So um, forgive me if that's not how you pronounce it. But we sold him to, I think it was a AC Gent or something like that. Um, he didn't get a try. And, and he scored as well pre-season. So did Broja. And um, next thing you know, they were, well, one was sold and the other one was loaned out. So, um, yeah, I won't say anything there. Uh yeah, man. I'm, what can I say? Burnley, they went with a dry 4-4-2, just like I told you they would. Nick Pope in goal, didn't I tell you? Loughton, Taylor, Tarkovsky and Ben Mee. Um, they played, I told you they would, and they did. Uh, Goodmanson, Brownhill, Dwight McNeil and Ashley Westwood in the midfield as the four. And the two forwards, they went with Chris Wood and... Maxwell Corne. Now you remember I was saying that they could possibly uh, go with Vidra and uh, say Ashley Barnes or they might mix. I told you they might mix it up. Um, but they went with Corne and Chris Wood. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not here to rate Burnley, but they, they, they were incredibly lucky in this game. They should not have won this game. We, we, we did um, we didn't outplay them enough. You know, we, yeah, we had the shots on goal and that. 
but we were giving them a lot of time on the ball as well and uh, we didn't close them down quick enough um, who did they have on the bench Wayne Hennessy Connor Roberts uh, Nathan Collins Eric Peters Kevin Long Jack Cork Ashley Barnes Jay Rodriguez and Miet Mietev Vaidra um, Eric Peters came on 88th minute he came on for Maxwell Corne. it was very late by them but him as a defender, I don't know what it done. Um, boosted them uh, in the defence and fresh legs uh, prevailed and he, he managed to start knocking the ball forward. Um, he didn't get a lot of touches on the ball, but he got enough to you know, cause us a few problems. Uh, Jay Rodriguez, he came on in the 61st minute. Like I said, when he came on, he changed the game. When he came on for Chris Wood, uh, in the 61st minute, he changed the game for Burnley. They they certainly look like scoring there. Obviously, Jay Rodriguez is a forward. He was a winger um, first. No, a midfielder. Uh, left and right midfielder. Then he converted to the wings. And then he became an attacking midfielder. Then like a forward. So, uh, he's, he's come on. And Vaidra came on 70 minutes. He came on for uh, Good Goodmanson. But like I said before, man, this team, we should be beating this team, this shambolic team. Yeah, this little racist team. Yeah, we should be beating these, the, the, this team. Um, and I, I, I knew, I don't know if the, the, the man them got intimidated, but I just don't know how Burnley, you know, yeah, I don't know how they've got away with that today. But anyway, it was, it was what it was. I don't want to keep talking about it. Um, we've got to improve at um, players. This is ridiculous, man. And um, even when we played the three up front, what we did was that we played a flat back three and then obviously the flat four in midfield. But then we played uh, Ross Barkley lacking a diamond if that makes sense so it would have been like him silver uh kante and that would be Jorginho. that was their little diamond there now don't get me wrong that did work i did understand why he kind of did that and then he had um kai havertz and of course callum hudson adoy playing as like two strikers so it wasn't like the three four one two that we played before this was a different one we're actually supposed to play i think it's three four uh two one or whatever but either way uh it, it, the, the formation was a little bit i don't know but anyway it worked for reese james and kai havertz um so long may that continue kai havertz is not a striker though he's a good player but he's not a striker i know he scored and well done to him for scoring because we've needed a goal for some time. But um, I'm not convinced that he's... I'm not even convinced he's a very good attacking player, to be honest. I never thought he signed for that reason. I always thought he was going to be the player, the guy in the midfield, creating the play, doing the tricks. You know, all the stuff that he was doing at by Leverkusen. But at Leverkusen, he did play deep in the midfield, um, you know. And sometimes it, it, it's got to be in you to attack. So he's got a lot to learn. He's young. Um, he'll come good. But I, I think for now, man, yeah, we have to go with somebody else as that lone striker. I would rather go with Zayic, to tell you the truth. Um, I've said that I don't know how many times, but it is what it is. Uh, we gave away, let me see, because that was a lot, oh, shitload of um, yellow cards. There was five yellow cards in this game, man. I told you that our players would start collecting yellow cards week by week. We have to be careful of that. Reese James did pick up a yellow card. Um, fair play to him, but he picked that up because basically he, he, at some point he, he looked like the only man that was really wanted to be there and really wanted to win the game. Um but he can't afford to keep putting his uh, his kind of status on the line like that because if he keeps collecting them up, 
he'll get a ban, he'll get a, like a one match ban and it will be an important game like a Man City or a game that we have to really, really win to win the title or something like that where, we, where he'll, he'll be missing. So um, if everybody else pulls in their work, closing down the opposition, then Reese wouldn't have got a yellow card. Um, Tarkovsky got a yellow card, Brownhill, Westwood and Corne, they all got yellow cards. Um, a bit of ill discipline in Burnley. Don't really like them, but anyway, it is what it is. One all, uh, we're still top of the league. Um, not really impressed with with today's victory, and I, I mean, it's a today's victory, today's um, uh, draw. I would prefer to see um, us lose. I would have preferred to lose to Burnley, to be quite honest, than than that. Um, let's see, let's see what else was there. Nothing else, nothing else to really report on the game. Um, we just have to go back to the drawing board. And um, definitely in January, either bring back an attacking player or just find a new style of attacking. We've got some great players there and we should be able to score a lot more goals than that. Okay. Um... That was the third game on Saturday, 6th of November. Friday, 5th of November, bonfire night. Southampton kicked off against um, Aston Villa. And it ended uh, being 1-0 to Southampton. Um, Villa, <laughs> boy, Villa. <laughs> Let's not go there. Adam Armstrong got a goal early in that game in the third minute. And that's pretty much how it ended. Um, it that was pretty much, less, but they held on to their win. They didn't lose focus like we did. Um, Man United. Oh, the first game on Saturday, <laughs> the sixth of November, was the Manchester derby. And uh, boy, I saw Man United. I wouldn't have said they was wrapped in a spliff. I wouldn't have said that. But the game was done from from half time. At half time, it was done. They went two nil down at half time to um, to Man City, and the game ended up two nil. Eric Bally scored an own goal in the seventh minute, and in the forty fifth minute, Bernardo Silva um, managed to put away convert a chance which was set up by Yao Cancelo in the forty fifth minute. And yeah, that's it. It's scary hours for Man United now. That's all I gotta say. It is scary, scary hours for them, cause uh, when we check the table in a minute, I'll show you why. But it is definitely scary hours for United. Brentford, they were at home, second game on Saturday, to Norwich City, and um, Brentford lost two-one in that game. Matthias Norman uh, kicked the game off, scoring in the sixth minute, and. Timu Puki, remember I told you about that guy. <laughs> he got a penalty uh, in the 29th minute. And uh, yeah, it was 2-0 up, um, which Norwich City were in the, in the first half. I was shocked that Norwich City even managed to get that. Even get, I thought they would, at best, they'll get a point against Brentford. But Brentford, boy, don't know what happened, man. Rico Henry, though, he scored. He got on the team sheet. I mean, it's just team sheet the score sheet. he got on the team sheet and the score sheet um this weekend uh scoring in the 60th minute and it was saman goddess um that's you know gave him the assist in the 60th minute um good win for norwich i mean come on man they're they're bottom bottom of the table so yeah but that that was really good for them but um we'll see Maybe they can turn their season around. Who knows? Um, I doubt it, though. Chelsea, obviously, that was the fourth, third game. We played Burnley. We drew 1-1. And I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, the fourth game was Crystal Palace. Um, Patrick Vieira's team kicked off at home against Wolves. It was 0-0 at halftime. In the 61st minute, James MacArthur 
set up Wilfred Zaha to score in the 61st minute. Conor Gallagher then put them up 2-0 in the 78th minute. And I've told you this already. We do have Armando Broja on loan at Southampton. And we have Conor Gallagher from our academy on loan at Crystal Palace. And he's doing phenomenal. He actually got man of the match again. And he's doing phenomenal things. I'd like to see him in the England team. And uh, really, I can't wait till he comes back to the club uh, next season. Um, if I was him, I'd stay at Crystal Palace for this year. Possibly even do another year on loan if you could. But that he's, he's looking really sharp. He's looking really good. And well done to him. Well done to Patrick Vieira for that. And well done to Darren Powell. Uh, youth team coach at Crystal Palace. Um, yeah, big up to all of you guys this weekend. Uh, fifth game to be played was Brighton Hove and Albion. Uh, they were at home to Newcastle. That game ended up 1-1. That game, I think it, Newcastle actually do put me to sleep. They really do put me to sleep, man. Um, it was 1-0. <laughs> sorry, Brighton were 1-0 up in the first half. Uh, God, who scored, man? Um, Leandro, what's his name? Trossard scored a penalty in the 24th minute. And Robert Sanchez uh, in the 92nd minute, he was sent off. Um, Isaac Hayden converted a goal in the 66th minute, which was set up by Kieran Clark. So definitely Isaac Hayden is starting to step out of the shadows and uh, Newcastle it, it could end nicely for them um, once you know January comes they're able to buy players but I must say to people at the moment they look like they're on relegation form so do not expect that Newcastle are just gonna come and new, you know new money and all of this because We've seen what happened with Man City. It took s about three seasons before Man, Man City really got, um, really started looking dangerous. Well, not three seasons, but at least two seasons it took them. Anyway, that um, concluded Saturday. On Sunday, 7th of November, on Sky Sports, I told you, and I, I was quite happy for this team. Um, but I've got to say, some of their fans like I, i'm talking like uh some of their fans man yo arsenal what happened like how many months ago when you lot was crying talk about you going you know you're gonna protest and rare tear fuck arsenal and da -da 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 -da. why are we giving the mill smith road a number 10 da -da 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 -da. And, and he's he got man of the match a mill smith road scored in the 56 minute um Uraj Kuka or Kaka sorry uh, got sent off in the 89th minute for me Emil Smith Rowe was immense in that game man I think that's his third goal now um, in as many matches I think they played really good I'm not going to lie man they, they look like a, a different team Ainsley Maitland Niles in the midfield where he plays his natural position that's why I tuned in as well to, to see him in the midfield and he looks good he looks like he deserved to be there he didn't even get benched he, he came on and played the whole match and and that's what I, I, I told Arsenal fans years ago once he starts playing in the midfield and his natural position you'll start to see his thing he, when he was playing right back that was some makeshift shit and I don't you know what I mean I don't play that yeah, you know, I don't play. I never played it as a player. So even just watching a, a team, I hate people playing people out of position, and then and then criticizing them as well. That's some mad shit. Um, up front, they went with Lacazette and Abom and Abba, uh, but they were pretty good. Emil Smith Rowe, though, just like for the people that was yeah, like he is a left winger, and he did play on the left wing. It was Maitland Niles and. Uh, Lokonga that were in the middle and Saka was on the was on the right so Emil Smith-Rowe that is his natural position as a left as a left winger um, 
he could play on the right wing as well but he he was always a left winger and that's what he does when he plays there and he's able to cut in and have his long runs and and all of that he does his thing um trying to play him in the center he can play there but that's not his position and as we saw today for the first time in god knows how long we have seen Lacazette and Aubameyang actually partner each other with Lacazette playing behind um, Abba but me personally anybody with any brains knows that you swap them round you play uh, Lacazette as high up the pitch as you can and have Abba behind him floating uh, in the channels through the channels but that's just me anyway everybody different strokes for different folks uh, Arsenal did win but um, I, f I feel a storm is coming because there's always calm before a storm so uh, they also played second game on Sunday uh, that was a boring nil nil bore fest against Spur. Mason Holgate got sent off in the 92nd minute he got a red card Conte's team I guess they did defend you know that that's what it is with thing um, but yeah any Tottenham fan expecting um, things to change after like one game of Conte being in charge well think again it's going to take them till at least December to to know where they really stand in this premiership they, they, I know one thing they're not winning the, the league this year um, that's for sure. Third, um, the third game on Sat on Sunday, sorry, was um, Leeds. No, wait a minute. Yeah, it was Leeds United. Leeds United versus Leicester City. That was one all. It, it ended one all. It was one all at half time. Rafina got a goal in the 26th minute, where he just literally. It was a good goal, but the execution of that goal, it. it it was me it looked to me like he meant to cross it in the box he actually did mean it he did mean to shoot it in the box he made out to the goalkeeper like he was crossing it but he'd curled it in um i'm not going to lie uh i think the the brother's name is rafael uh, diaz you know that's his real name you know? rafael diaz but i don't know why they called him rafinha but um yeah rafinha is not he's brazilian but he's no like, come on, man, He's, you're not Ronaldinho, you're not them man there. Um, you, he might be good at a team maybe like Arsenal. I could see him really coming up and thing. Even at Chelsea, he'd be a better player. But uh, not at, at Leeds, nah, man. Um, Harvey Barnes scored two minutes afterwards uh, to spare Leicester's blushes. And that goal was um, assisted by... Uh, I can't pronounce his first name by Samari okay I can't pronounce his first name it's too too technical man um, but yeah Harvey Barnes scored in the 28th minute and that's basically it um, for them that was another ball fest I gotta say um, Rafina is good don't get me wrong but it's slightly overrated he's not ready for the big big time not yet he's way off he's he's got a lot of things to work on man um the fourth game on sunday was west ham and liverpool that was live on sky sports i told you lot that this would be the big game and to my detriment i can't remember if i said west ham would win no i did say west ham would win because there's at home However, Trent Alexander-Arnold, he got man at the match. Um, for me, phenomenal free kick. Was it a free kick? Yeah, it was a free kick. Uh, in the 41st minute, Alisson had scored an own goal in the fourth because there was a shot. I forgot who had the shot on goal for West Ham. But it was just one of those ones where I guess he tried to clear it off the line and it kind of just bounced in the goal. Um, that was in the fourth minute. 41st minute like I said Trent Alexander he came back and uh, leveled things up for Liverpool and they went into the into half time at 1-1 they came out Pablo Fornals that was a brilliant a well worked goal as well I like that the link up play between him and oh, I forgot what player it was man I don't really watch West Ham like that let me see let me just see it was the number it was the number eight. 
that I saw that kept um yeah it was fun oh that yeah the same guy <laughs> the same guy scored yeah he was he was just immense I saw him floating in just r giving Liverpool the run around through the middle and um linking up with the wingers and the attackers quite well um he scored in the 67th minute then Kurt Zalma uh, scored in the 74th also it was ja that's who I was trying to think it was Gerard Bowen who got the assist for f four nows and Zalma uh, in the 67th and 74th minute respectively he was the guy that I couldn't think of his name he was the guy that was linking up with with those guys and causing problems and then we had Divock Origi get a brilliant goal where he actually turned like he was going to shoot with his right foot and then turned onto his left and placed it in the uh, bottom bins, man. That was a good goal. That goal from um, Origi was really, that, that was really classy. And those goals were assisted by Mohamed Salah um, and Trent Alexander-Arnold, respectively. So, Alexander-Arnold got on the score sheet with a goal assisted by Salah. And then, of course, uh, he got an assist for Origi so maybe um, Liverpool had hit they must have really got shouted at by Jurgen Klopp I can imagine but they came out with some fight but the, the game ended up 3-2 to West Ham um, I give Arnold the, the mighty line award for that game and um, yeah that was it that you know that's that ends the, uh, the weekend's festivities uh, Norwich in 20th place, N Newcastle 19th, Burnley in 18th place, we have Watford and Villa joint 16th and 17th, Leeds in 15th place, Brentford in 14th, um, Southampton are in 13th place and we have three we have a, a a free team tie in 12th, 11th and 10th place for Leicester, Everton and Crystal Palace respectively. I think Crystal Palace are at the top of them because they've got better goal difference. Spurs and Wolves are both on 16th points. Um, so that means spot 9 and 8 are taken by those two teams. Uh, Brighton and Man United. I can't even believe I'm saying this. Brighton and Man United, 7th and 6th place, both on 17 points. Man United ahead on goal difference. Arsenal, they've moved above Man United. Um, well, well and truly now, they're 3 points ahead of United in 5th place um, on 20 points. But I can see that changing. I could see that change. I could see Brighton's, Arsenal's and Wolves' fortunes changing um, over these colder months that are coming up. Fourth place, Liverpool, 22 points. West Ham and Man City are both on 23 points, uh, sitting high, second and third. And of course, the mighty Blue Lions, 23, uh, sorry, 26 points. An amazing goal difference, uh, 23 goals uh, plus goals. Yeah, that's quite good actually. Um, so there it is, man. We're riding high, 26 points. Only three points in it between us, Man City and West Ham. But I'm not worried at the moment, man. Um, I'm still going to wait till December before I, st before I know, know what's going to happen. Because relatively by December, you can start to tell whether we're going to drop points or whether, you know what I mean? For obviously for younger Chelsea fans, you ain't going to be used to the roller coaster that comes with being a Chelsea supporter. I think, um, and I'm just saying that to the younger ones, because boy, if you had to go to the games that we had to go to back in the day, you, you'll understand why. Um, anyway, it was good from, um, good from Chelsea just need to improve attacking and uh, we need to stay focused for 95 minutes we play to the whistle we should never drop our heads that was really really calamitous goal 
um, that we we gifted Burnley and um, Silva and Christiansen. I don't. I just. I said it before. They don't work well together. Yeah, Chris. You, you need somebody around those guys that almost can upstate has the ability to upstage them, but doesn't. That's Chalobah. That's you play him. You just signed him, big um, new contract and all of this. Play him. You know what I mean? Anyhow, that happened. Uh, we're first, and um, yeah, let's let's let me just uh, see what's coming up. We got an international break. I'm told you I'm not interested in the internationals. I hate them because they get our players injured. And I, I just, just focused on Chelsea, actually. You know what I mean? That's how we make our money. Um, <laughs> you know, so forget about that. But um, everybody's back on the 20th, I think. And yeah, my son's birthday is the week up. Yeah, 28th. So I'll be waiting for that. We're playing Man United on that day. So um, to my boy, if you're listening, like make sure... You're at Nanny's house or my house on Sunday. Um, but you might be playing. He actually, he might be playing football. So I don't I don't even know if he's going to be able to make that. But either way. Um, yeah, we've got Man United on the 28th of this month. And on the 20th, when we come back from the international break, we are kicking off at 12.30 on BT Sport. And we are playing Leicester City. And we're, we're going to be playing away. And um, yeah, that's going to be something else, that game as well. I think that game's going to be significant as well into how we move on throughout the season, especially attacking-wise. So hopefully the international break gives us enough time, um, at least or too sure enough time to come up with some attacking uh, styles of play or something, man, because... It's not looking good. Um, yeah, like I said, Sunday 28th of November, we're playing Manchester United. That's live on Sky Sports. And uh, this is what I didn't want to say. We have, after, after the game on Sunday the 28th, three days later, we're playing, because um, there's only 30 days in November, yeah. So we're playing on Wednesday the 1st of December, we're playing Watford. At 7.30 and we're playing them away. And Watford are so cheap that they've actually struck a deal with Prime Video. This is how lowly uh, Watford are becoming, man. I just really hate this, man. I've always liked Watford because Watford, like, they do take a lot of urban inner city youth. And, you know what I mean? They do bring in a few. They've been doing it ever since John Barnes played for them. You've got to remember as well, uh, for those that don't know, John Barnes was the one that really kicked them, kicked off Watford's popularity and everything else. And and he brought a lot of revenue to the club. Obviously, when he was sold to Liverpool, not just that, but just his fame as well made Watford infamous. So just remember that to anybody that it was John Barnes that really brought up Watford and made them what they are. Um, we're playing three days after that. Three days after Watford, Saturday, 4th of December, we're playing West Ham. And we're playing them at 12.30 again. Um, that's going to be on BT Sport. Those four games are literally, that's, okay, Leicester, the Leicester game, we've got eight, eight days in between. No, seven days in between. But we play like three games within eight days. It's just ridiculous, man. It's going to get congested. And we're going to need to have our wits about us. And we're going to need to be attacking better. I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to go on too much. I've been here way too long. Congratulations to the team. I'm glad that you you finally, like you've all, you've got camaraderie. You all trust each other. All know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Now it's time to put all this stuff you've learned in training apply it in the game now man we, we should be destroying teams like Burnley and and I, I can't blame the midfield because it's not really their fault uh, Chris Danson to me and I, I don't like singling people out 
the two of them, him and Silver. Silver, I can understand, might be a language thing. It might be the the fact he doesn't speak much English. But still, Chris Danson, both of them were facing the complete... When you watch that goal again, you, you'd see what I'm talking about. That was schoolboy shit, man. Um, but uh, it is what it is. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you to everybody. Um, I will start to go to the games and do my live vlogs. Um, but I'm doing that from next year. I'm going to do that when the when the weather gets better, man. I'm still a bit iffy. Uh, just Not just the COVID. I'm still a bit iffy because there's a lot of flus going around. There's a lot of colds going around. There's a lot of viruses because people are nasty. They don't wash their hands. They want to cough, cough on the bus. They want to brush into you when they're walking down the street. I just hate people. At the moment, I'm really, really, really pissed off with um, how people are acting in, in Britain and in London especially. Londoners, man. Some of you, some of y'all Londoners need to get it together, man. Serious. This is London. Like, fix it. Wake up. You know what I mean? There's people like the COVID numbers have gone up again um so you know people are people are just being reckless man um and that's it so i'm not gonna say no more my son's got a trial this week i'll tell you about it um closer to the time after saturday i'll tell you how it went whether he got the, the into the team or not but he starts his <laughs> Sunday league semi-pro career again for the second time this season he's already left the club and uh, <laughs> yeah I don't blame him I don't, I don't blame him if I was in a club where I'm I'm the only one scoring and setting up the goals and you're just leaking in 10 goals a game uh, I don't think I'd want to play for a club like that so that it is what it is big up to my son Kai Kai big up to all the um, November Saggies, like I always say, big up to Kai Havertz for actually getting the goal. You're not a striker, but you're a good player. But I, we we need to see it, man. We need to see it. If you if you're gonna play there, you you need to get more prolific, man, and not just headers. You know what I mean? You've got feet. You've got two feet, a left foot and a right foot. We'd li I'd like to see some some goals now, man. Seriously. So that's it. I'm gonna leave it there. I'm out. God bless.